Hi, I'm Jack from Slapshot, and you're watching a Grasser production. Hello and welcome to Grasa Production. My name is Oli and I'm sitting here with Jack from Slapshot. Hello. Hi, how are you? Very fine, thanks a lot. Um, well, Slapshot exists now over 30 years. 32. I said over 30? 30. <laughs> 33 this September. Okay. Um, what would you say is the biggest change that you went through with um, your band but um, or maybe the whole scene? I wouldn't say the whole scene. I mean, I think kids are the same as they ever were. Um, I mean, with us, you know, we kind of went a little bit astray with our, like, sound and everything in, like, early 90s. But, you know, when you're <clears throat> playing, like, you're in the hardcore, you play the same thing over and over and over again. Sometimes you want to try something different. And we tried something different and it didn't work at all. And, like, the like two records that we put out were just awful. So, um, I think in, like, 96, we got our old drummer back and we started let's okay let's do what we do best and i'm not saying like all the records after that were great we put out a couple stinkers but it's because maybe my head wasn't in the right spot and we weren't writing such good music but it was still like hardcore um um but yeah i would say that i'm kind of we're kind of at the point now where it's like okay this is what we do we do this really well so let's just stick to this and and i wouldn't say like uh, you know the new record is um, you know, any different from what we've been putting out in the past few years, but there's degrees of, of different and better, you know, and I think, I think the new records, we're pretty happy with it. I think some of your fans are much, much younger than probably you are, or even younger than the band is uh, at age. Oh, yeah. Um, I think also that you're kind of a role model for many, especially younger musicians or younger people. How does it feel for you to be a role model for much younger people? Um, I wouldn't want anyone to look at me and want to be like, you know, like, like me. I mean, yeah, I mean, sure. I'm straight edge and there's all that sort of like good side of things where, um, you know, you don't smoke, you don't drink, you don't do drugs. And, and I think that is a, is a good lifestyle for anybody. And, you know, um, You know, I'm 55. I feel pretty good. Maybe that's because of straight edge, or maybe not. I, you know, who knows? There, are, there are people that drink their whole lives and do heroin, and they're still doing just fine. So who knows? Maybe it's a you know combination of different things. But I wouldn't want. I don't want to be anybody's role model. I mean, I think people, people that are into hardcore, are pretty messed up. You don't get into this angry, violent music when you're all right in the head. I think, and particularly, uh, we've been around an extra long time. We're extra fucked up. Because some people, they grow up, they move on to other kinds of music, and they're not as you know, angry and, and into this kind of stuff. We're still doing it, so there's something definitely wrong with us. So, yeah, I mean, as far as role models, I wouldn't, I wouldn't say I've ever wanted to be or, or people should you know, kind of follow you know, my example. Because, I mean, I, I'm no better than anybody else. We all have our, you know, we're all fucked up in different ways. Do you have yourself some kinds of role models or someone who pushed you to begin with hardcore music or you get inspired by somebody w at the beginning? Yeah, people have asked me, like, what got you into, like, punk rock? And I have to say, you know, honestly, the violence. I mean, I was, a, you know, like a 12-year-old kid you know angry at the world and and whatever you know my life or whatever like like a lot of kids and i saw you know the, the punk rock and all the you know the pogoing and, and the, the screaming and all that kind of stuff and it just appealed to me now i think that's pretty messed up looking back on it but it is what it is and when you're young you you know you kind of find your place in the world and you, you know you continue on i mean i don't listen to hardcore so much anymore i listen to all kinds of different music like in my own time I like to play it, I like to perform it, but um, I'm not into like hardcore like music as it is now. Like if you asked me, like mentioned a band, I was like, I don't, I have no idea who they are, unless I saw their their, their name on a poster or something. Yes, I've seen them, or we played with them once, but I wouldn't know a song if you played it for me. I'd never know it. 
Actually, actually, I just wanted to ask you, like, what bands inspire you or um, what kind of music you listen to when you're at home or driving in your car or I don't know, because probably you don't uh, hear only um, hardcore music, as you just mentioned. Yeah, I mean, in my own time, I mean, I've been into the drum and bass scene since, like, the early 90s when, like, drum and bass sort of came around. I'm still into that, honestly. Um, I like a lot of, you know, uh, uh, EDM. I listen to a lot of that kind of stuff in my own, in my own time. Uh, you know, singers and standards. I like Rosemary Clooney and Frank Sinatra, and I listen to a lot of that in the car too. Sometimes uh, podcasts, you know, whatever. You know, uh, yeah, it's usually not. I mean, black metal. I mean, I've been into everything over the years, you know, and and I still I still like some some old black metal, but yeah, not so much hardcore though. <laughs> um, looking back now to the past nearly 33 years w would there be some highlights that you never forget in your whole life what you um yeah had with slapshot oh um oh there's you know i mean there's just been so many years of of things unfortunately i think a lot of the th things i remember that you know sort of like the bad events things like that um you know the good stuff is the good stuff and, and unfortunately a lot of that time that kind of stuff gets you know kind of into the into the ether and you you kind of forget that stuff until it comes up again you know i suppose maybe our first festivals were really sort of remarkable it was like wow i can't believe we were playing in front of this many people and our, our obviously our first tour in europe was just amazing just kind of coming over and seeing the difference in the in the in the kind of scenes are there what are the differences oh i think i think european kids are into everything like like we could play at a club and then go to like a disco after the show and there'd be kids from the show at the disco. You don't really see that in America. Kids are like, you're into rap and that's all you listen to is rap. You're into metal, you're a metal head. Um, you don't get that kind of crossover for the most part. But over here you get kids, kids listen to everything. That's why you can have these festivals and so many like heavy music festivals and so many people show up because they don't just listen to like you know metal and hardcore they listen to everything mm -hmm. you're the last original member of slapshot is it kind of a one-man show or are the other members equally important or equally oh, no, everybody's you know we're a we're a full band uh i mean obviously the the, the singer the front man is always going to be like the you know sort of focus of, of attention but we're a unit now i mean for, for sure now like with craig and ryan and Corey, it's just I, I think when we when you get a, a lineup and then we play, you'd better you know honestly like a lot of people are like holy crap you know like Slapshot was like I don't know I think like live we're I don't know a force you know all those all those guys together we we come on and we you know have a, a good time and it shows it's you know because it's that's what it's about it's it's about having fun you know I mean yeah you can get these kids doing violent stuff and or the dancing and the circle pit which i hate but um you know when it comes right down to it if you're not having fun then stop doing it mm -hmm. and you know and the kids if they're not and you know if they're not having fun then you're doing something wrong like i've never like i, I hear it all the time from bands that are up on stage going they're like oh come on up front come on up no 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 it's not it's not their job to entertain me yeah. it's my job to motivate them I've never once, I never berate the audience. The audience, they paid their money. If they want to stand there and do this in the back, that's fine. You paid your money, do what you want. If I can't motivate you to, to get out there and do stuff, then maybe I'm doing something wrong. Or you just don't feel like doing it. I, I'm 55, I stay way in the back. Or I don't even go, I don't even go. <laughs> I stay home and watch TV. <laughs> do you actually like playing at festivals or do you prefer smaller club shows or something like that? I prefer smaller club shows. I mean, the festivals are fun, cause, but you have to do a different thing. Like festivals, you, you just have to do everything bigger. Because you're not playing to the people that are like right in front. They can see you. You have to play to the people that can't really see you. So everything you do like is a little bit more exaggerated. You know what I mean? It's just the way, you know, you just have to change the performance a little bit. But obviously, a small basement where it's, dripping from the ceiling and it's everyone's hot and sweaty those are those are my favorite those are fun i don't care if there's like 50 people there if, if everyone's packed in and having fun that's that's what it's about 
Do you sometimes feel like when you play in front of bigger crowds, for example, at a festival like this one, that not everyone understands your values or your messages? Like, um, do you mind that if they don't get it, what you're doing? No. I mean, I mean, what message values? I don't know. I, I, we're not that kind of band. I leave that for other bands. We don't have, I, I don't necessarily feel we have a values or messages. Um, all right, here and there maybe, but um, no, we're not that kind of band. If they, I, I think it's more of a feeling that I want to get across of, you know, just have fun. It's aggressive. We're doing our thing. But as far as getting a message, you're not going to get it at a live show, really, anyway. Go, go home and listen to the record and get your feelings there. A live, live is not the, a live show is not the place for feelings. <laughs> That brings me to my next question. Um, your brand new album uh, is called Make America Hate Again. It just came out. Mm -hmm. um, by the title, I believe it's about the political situation in America, you probably. About, But now you tell me what it's about. <laughs> Uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's not even about necessarily um, that people are too PC nowadays, but I think, you know, you've got, right now you've got this discussion about civility, and civility is, to me is just another word for a political, political correctness, and I think we need, well, what, with what's going on nowadays, we need less civility and more anger and more action, not less civility. You've got one side who's acting and they've got they've got control they've got the power and the other side just keeps oh no we have to be we have to be right and we have to take the high road all the time no we're fighting a different kind of war now it's time to like get down and dirty and start like throwing punches or like you know some people you you say you're bringing rocks to a gunfight mm -hmm. that's a saying well i say all right get rid of the rocks start bringing nuclear weapons to a gunfight, because okay. that's what we're up against nowadays. Yeah, it's less, less civility. We need, make America hate again is more about, it's less about political, you know, politics. I don't sing about that kind of stuff. It's more about action and what, what needs to be taken care of. We, we need less, we need more hate, not less. And what do you hate right now the most? Like what's the main thing that you would actually, would want to fight again, against? Um, well, I mean, in general right now like just civility in, in general you know you've got you know I don't even want to get into like the the politics of what's happening but we've got you know we've got a guy in there that's just throwing everything away just literally just whatever whatever we were stood by stood for before as far as America goes we're just going to dispose of all that and uh, you know people need to kind of wake up and start doing something about it rather than just okay well this is the way it's this is the way it is oh there's nothing we can do about it no there is there are things you can do about it you need to do something about it okay but when you when you're far away from home like europe is actually very far and um, do you miss home or did you get used to being away oh sure sure i miss home you know i mean it's all the, the comforts and and the food and you know sleeping in where you're <laughs> familiar with and you're not in a van driving you know eight or nine hours yeah I mean there's a lot there's a lot to miss about being home I mean I like playing the shows and that's always fun there's a lot of boredom okay. touring everyone thinks you know oh wow you're going over to Europe and doing all this cool stuff what's cool you know what I mean like you know you're in the van for hours and hours and usually you don't even get to see some of the major cities that you that you want to go into it's a lot of boredom there's a reason why all these rock and rollers were drug addicts and alcoholics so there's nothing else to do there's oh no really there's nothing else to do like you know you've got all the beer you can drink you know and you've got all these other you know people like bringing you stuff yeah i mean you can get into a lot of trouble being in a band you know and i mean i'm i'm straight edge so i don't worry about that kind of stuff but yeah i mean there's when there's all the alcohol you can drink and eight hours of nothing to do so what what is it that Boy, boys are going to get into trouble What is it that you do then? I drink a lot of coffee, if you couldn't tell. <laughs> There are many other hardcore bands playing here at this festival at mm -hmm. Mission Ready, for example, Sick of It All and First Blood. Are you friends with some bands or do you actually hardly know each other? Yeah, no, no. I mean, I've known the guys in Sick of It All since the 80s, you know. 
Yeah. Was it a gathering for you here? Uh, yeah, no, I mean, I, they're doing their thing. We're doing ours. I, I'll say hello. Uh, generally speaking, I, I try to leave people alone. Because, you know, you know, I, I kind of want to do my thing and kind of chill and I kind of keep to myself. I mean, maybe after the show I'll hang around a little bit. But, you know, before, I'm, you know, I let people, you know, everyone's got everyone asking them to do, you know, asking for their time to do other things. So, you know, I don't know, I, I leave everybody alone. I'll say hi, shake their hands, and how's it going? You know, good to see you again. And then I kind of go off, let them let be, the, be alone. You just said that you don't actually go to concerts or not really checking out other or new bands, but as you're on festivals, maybe you see some shows, maybe today, do you, have you seen a show today nope. or are looking forward to one? Nope. I mean, I might hang out and I'll see some of Sick of It All later or some of the other bands after, but the thing is, after we play, I'm going to be too hot and sweaty to, to care. I'm going to come backstage and chill out. Maybe once I'm cool, cooled off and stuff, maybe I'll, I'll come back out, but I don't like, I don't like summer. I don't like summer at all. Me neither. It's it's hot and it's sunny, and and it's uncomfortable. I really I really don't like summer at all. I'm feeling you. I prefer <laughs> I prefer October. Um, okay, and you said at festival shows everything has to be bigger and has to be um, yeah bigger and more. Um, what can we expect at your show today? Oh, just uh, we're just gonna do our thing. You know, people, you know, will ask, what do you do to warm up? You know, do you kind of psych yourself up? No. I mean, at this point, you just get on stage, you flip the switch, the first song plays, and then you go. Yeah, I don't, I don't warm up my voice or do anything like that. Maybe, you know, might warm, you know jump, jump around a little bit, but that's it. Okay. Stretch, because I'm old, and I don't want to hurt anything. <laughs> Is there something else you always wanted to say? No. <laughs> No, because if I say things like that, then we'll get into trouble. <laughs> okay, so then thank you very much for your time. Uh, we're looking forward to your show, and goodbye.